Hey, how's it going everyone? In the previous video, we deep dived into Postman scripts and created few scripts to get and set the Postman variables as well as make API requests through our scripts. In this video, we will take a look at how to write Postman test scripts and the advantages of using Postman test. So let's talk about the advantages of using Postman test. So with Postman test, you can validate the response of the API to ensure it's working as expected. So, so far we have just been making API requests using Postman. But how do we know that the data being returned is what we want? So using test, we can verify the response and the functionalities of our API. And we can also perform regression testing to ensure that the new development changes haven't broken our existing functionality. So one of the main purposes of writing these tests is to make sure if something breaks, we can catch it right away through the automation we have built using this test without having to do anything manually. Now let's talk about how we can actually write these tests. So we can use the pm.test function to create test in Postman. So here's an example where we are verifying the status of the response that we got back. So if you notice, we're using the pm.test function and in the bracket here, we're actually writing the name of our test, which is called status test. And then we are creating the function. And then within this curly brackets here, we are writing pm.response to have status 200. So we are basically saying that the response should have status of 200. Now, what is this syntax dot to have? So Postman test uses ChaiJS VDD syntax for test assertions. Now, those of you that are not familiar with ChaiJS, it's basically a JavaScript testing library that allow you to add test assertions. And some of the examples of that are dot to have, which we just looked at here, dot to equal and dot to not have. So these are some of the common ones, but if you go to ChaiJS website, which I will add the link in the description below for that, you can see a lot more different types of assertions that you can use. And we will look into some of these when we will head over to Postman. So as you can see that these are quite readable and you know exactly what that assertion is trying to verify. So that being said, let's head over to Postman now and take a look at how we can write this test. Okay, so if you remember from our previous video, we created the pre-request scripts, some test scripts, and same thing we did that for this, get pre-request script and test scripts too. So what we're gonna do here now is, we're not gonna work with pre-request script anymore, but instead we're gonna go to the test tab and create our test here. So I'm going to get rid of this console log. Now to create a test, as you just saw, we have to do pm.test. So let's do that thing. So we're going to do verify whether the response we get back is 200 or not. So here right now, when I hit send, I get this 200 OK response. So we're going to get the assertion for that. Now notice here in test results, we don't see anything right now. It says there are no tests for this request. Now let's add a test. So I'm going to do pm.test and then I'm going to name this verify 200 status response and then let me just fix the typo here i'm going to create a function now we're going to say pm dot response i'm going to say dot to have status and in the bracket i'm going to add 200 all right so i've created a function using the pm dot test function i've added the name the name of my test is verify 200 status response now the name could be anything right now. I'm just trying to make it as descriptive as possible. So we are saying that we are verifying the 200 status response. And over here, we actually verifying the response by doing PM the response to have status 200. Let's hit send and see what happens. So now if you notice in a response, nothing changed here. Everything looks still the same, but in the test results here, you can see that we see one out of one before we weren't seeing anything. So if I click on that, you can see that now it says pass verify 200 status response. So this is exactly the same name that I put here. So this is what we actually get over here. So that's why it's important to make a test descriptive. For example, if you just name this test and if you hit send, then it's just going to say test pass, but you don't exactly know what your test is passing. So it's good to make your test as descriptive as possible. All right. So now it says verify 200 status response that is working. Now let's say if I change this to 400 and if this fails, so this time it says zero out of one passed and over here our test field. So it says verify 200 status response and we're getting an assertion error and it's saying expecting the response status to have code 400, which basically what it's saying is over here, it was expecting it to be 400, but instead it got 200 here. If you notice it says, but instead it got 200. So that's why the test failed, but obviously we don't want that. So I'm going to change this back to 200, hit send and we got our verify 200 status response. So there you go. That's how you can actually write test in Postman. Now, obviously there's a lot more things that you can do with Postman test. So let's take a look at another example of how we can write test. 
So I don't have to keep on this adding more sessions here. While that is possible, I can also create new tests. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing and paste it here. So this is going to be my second test within the same request. So here, let's see what we can verify. So we are getting this response here. And if you notice, this is what it's trying to do is creating a new card, a new Postman card, or sorry, a new Trello card. And when it creates a card, we get this name, which is test three. Now I can either verify the name, which is that it's going to be test three, because that's what we are passing in on our request or in our request body. Or what I can just do is to make it as generic as possible. I'm going to say that the response name is not empty. So let's do that. So I'm going to change this to verify name is not empty. Now here I already have access to PM response. Now what you can do with Postman test is they give you access to something called pm.expect. So we are expecting some certain stuff. So here what I'm going to do is type pm.expect. Now in the bracket, you can notice that we can pass in some value and then it has some optional message that we can put in. Now, if you notice here, it says chai.accession. This is coming from chai expect a session. So in my brackets, I'm going to type in pm.response. So my value would be basically this name here, dot JSON to actually get access to my JSON body. And then I'm going to do dot name. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, give me this response JSON. And from there, give me access to the name, which is what we're trying to verify here. Now I can, like I mentioned, I can just do dot to equal, or I can do EQ or type in the entire equal. EQ is the shortcut. So I'm going to do dot to equal and I can type in the value. So I can just do test three. If I hit send, notice this time it says two out of two passed. And if I go here, verify name is not empty, but this is kind of weird because we're, that's not, we're actually verifying what we are verifying is to equal test three. So your name, that's why it could be anything. It doesn't really matter. The name is not really directly related to this, but here instead, what we are verifying is that it's equal to test three. If I change this to, let's say test four and hit send, a test would fail because it says it was expecting it to be test three. Instead, um, what it got back was test four. That's what it, sorry, it's the other way around. What it was expecting was test three to equal test four. So that's not what happened here because our response body was test three. Instead, we were expecting it to be test four. Now, if I actually revert this back to test three, but instead of verifying that this is test three, what I'm going to verify is that the name itself is not empty. I can do that by doing dot two, not be empty. All right. So here this time I'm saying, okay, I don't really care what the name is. I just want to make sure that the name is not empty. That's pretty much it. Let me fix this quickly. I got rid of the only brackets here. Okay. If I hit send here. This time we actually got two out of two. Everything is passing, no issues. Because we're obviously we're getting the name back and the name itself is test three. But if I change this to, let's say, to be empty, that I expect the name to be empty. And if I hit send, well, that failed because the name is not empty. We are getting test three back. So that's some couple of other ways where you, how you can actually add in assertions. Now, there are a lot of other chai assertions that you can work with, which you can take a look at the chai.js website to get more familiar with it. Now let's head over to our get card ID to add some test over here. Now, if you remember from our previous video, we created this pre-request script here where we were creating this card ID variable, right? Now let's do this in my test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that the card ID is actually what the response that we get back, which is over here. This thing is matches the card ID variable that we pass in. So let's see how we can do that with our test. So I'm going to do PM dot test here. I'm going to say verify response body. And create a function. So here I will do the same thing pm.expect. Now I'm going to say json.id, basically, this ID should equal to the card ID variable. So let's do that. So I'm going to do pm.response.json.id. Now this should equal dot to equal the variable card ID. So this thing here, so I'm going to do PM dot to get access to a variable. We do PM dot variables dot get, and then pass in the variable name. So the variable name is card underscore ID. If I hit send here, there you go. One out of one, our test is passing. It says verify response ID or response body. That's actually working. So that's pretty cool. We were actually just able to verify the variable that we created here 
and we actually went into our test script and made sure that the response body that I'm getting back is exactly the card ID that we passed in over here. So that's really good. So let's add in some more assertions here. Now I don't have to keep adding new tests to add in a session. I can just directly add a new assertion here. So for example, if I want to add an assertion to verify that the ID label here that we get back, that this is an array. I don't care what's inside it. All I'm caring about that this should be an array. So by array, that means it's a list with this brackets over here. So let's do that. So for that, I'm going to do kind of the same thing, pm.expect. And then I'm going to do pm.response. Dot JSON ID. Now this I'm making sure that it should be an array. So dot ID labels, by the way, let me fix that. To B N. And then over here I can type in some type here. So I can verify, for example, this is an array. For something else, I can verify it's a Boolean. For other things, I can verify it's a string. So here I'm just typing in that it's an array. If I hit send. All right, our test are still passing, but if you notice this time it says just one out of one because we just have one test here. We might have multiple assertions, but the test is just one. So it's only going to consider this as a one test. But if let's say if something fails here instead of array, if I change this to string, hit send, it would say our test failed. And then it would tell me that it was expecting an array of five elements in it. Instead, it got a string back. So over here, like the, what we were verifying was actually string, which is wrong. So I'm going to fix that again, change it to array. And there you go. Our test is passing again. Now, other than just verifying the response body, we can also verify certain other things. Like we can verify the cookies, the headers, or maybe the actual response time here. So let's say if you want to do some kind of little bit of performance testing here, and you want to verify that our response time is always under certain milliseconds. So let's say if you want to verify it's always under 200 milliseconds, we can do that too. So instead of typing all of this out, what I will do is in over here, is our, we have some scripts here. And we looked into some of the scripts in our previous video. But if I keep scrolling down, you can notice that there are more scripts. So we have response body to verify the JSON value check. If I add in here, it will basically verify the JSON value. I can remove, get rid of that. And we have some other ones here too. So the one that we are looking for is the response time is less than 200 milliseconds. If I enter that, so what it's doing it, it's basically picking up response dot response time. So it's from the response, it's going to pick up this response time and it's going to make sure that it's below 200. And if I hit send, there you go. We actually got this two out of two back and the response time is less than 200 millisecond is actually working. Now let's imagine if in future you added some more changes to your application and the performance decrease and this API, instead of returning it under 200 milliseconds, it's actually taking a lot more. Maybe it's taking 500 milliseconds. Now this test would fail at that point because then it would start saying, okay, you were expecting it to be 200 milliseconds, but instead we are getting back 500 or 600, whatever it is. So this is a good way to actually check that your API is still performing as expected as it should be. Now let's to make this test fail right now, we are getting around somewhere 65 milliseconds. Let's say if I change this to 50 milliseconds. And if I hit send, there you go, it failed. It says because it took 64 milliseconds, that's what it says. It took 64 milliseconds, but instead we were expecting it to be 50 milliseconds. So most likely you can imagine if in future, if your performance decreased, it, this test will most likely fail. So it's a good check to keep this in here. So, so far we have been adding test over here in our test script. Same thing we did it here in test script, which was on the request level, but we can also test, add a test on our folder level. So this is my folder. So let's say if I want to verify, if I quickly go to my get board ID, if I hit send, this is giving me 200. Okay. If I go to the next one, hit send, this is also giving me 200. Okay. Now, instead of going in and adding tests manually, what I can do is, or to basically to each request, I can go to the folder level, do edit. And in my test here, I can just say that the status should be 200. So I can just type in same thing that we were doing there. PM.test. So I can do verify status should be 200. And then just do function. And then we can do the same thing, pm.response dot two dot have status. And then this would be 200. Right, so I can save this here, update. Now what I'm gonna do is, the moment I hit, if you remember, when I, when I hit, hit send for this get board ID, we didn't see anything here. But if I hit send again, all right, this time we got test result one out of one. But if you go to test, we don't really have anything here. So it's actually picking up the test from the folder level. So in Postman, you can add tests not only on the request level, but also on the folder level and collection level, as well as the environment level. So here we are actually adding it on the folder level. And I know for this, anything request that we are adding in here is 200. But let's say if in future you add in a request here, which is not 200, then the test would fail. 
So that's why you always be careful when adding a folder level or collection level test. So make it in a way which is generic enough. If you add in there that it would no matter which API you add in would most likely would pass in for that. So here I know that I only have two requests and I'm getting unit status back. It's actually working. And I can verify the same thing for the other one too. If I hit send, yep, this one is passing too. And in my test, I actually just have this test script here, which is fine. So I can quickly go in and kind of add this generic 200 test to like other places too, to make sure that our test is there. So we already have one for this one. I can go into my put test. If I hit send, this will also, well, this one is giving me 400. And the reason for that is because it's probably expecting this card ID, which I can fix this. Let me hit send. Yep. We got 200 back. And in my test, I can paste that test that we just created and which was over here. Let me go to this one and copy this 200 test and then paste it here. Hit send and we're getting one out of one here. Okay. So now we have this test created for pretty much majority of our request. Now you can go ahead and kind of keep adding more tests depending on how you want to verify your application. Maybe you want to verify certain things, some dates or some uh, particular labels. You can keep going to your response and keep adding as many tests as possible, depending on your own use case for your particular application. So think of your test this way. Like when you're doing your manual testing, what exactly are you verifying? For example, if you're doing your email testing on email, you're verifying that the email should be of certain maximum characters or it should have at a domain.com. So if you can do the same kind of testing and verification over here with Postman test too. All right. So I hope you understand how Postman test works. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to run our Postman collections that we have built so far. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to support me, you can do that by sharing this video to whomever you think will find it useful. And you can also support me through Buy Me a Coffee website. The link will be in the description below for that. That's it for this video, guys. See you in the next one.